So, one of our users said they wanted to learn how to do underwater ship recovery. So, here we go. So, let's go over the requirements. First up, Mirage Island for submarines. Here we are on uh, Mirage Island. Um, this is where they sell the submarines. And the reason why I'm saying the submarines is it's a critical and required part for raising the actual ships. And I'm going to show you why. Each one of these submarines is available for 250 Gilda Stars. However, there are a few attachments that you're going to need. Um, a couple things you need to know. First of all, it does not come with the sonar, the air tank, or the fish fin. So does it come with anything? No, it, it's pretty bland <laughs> when you get it. And you got to buy and make all these things. So it's it's a, it's a it's a costly investment, but you get rewarded for it. You need an air cannon and the sonar. Okay, those are the two big things you need. The air tank is extremely helpful, especially so you don't have to keep wasting money on Dehuda bubbles and other breathing apparatus. The reinforced tail fin um, is useful for just moving faster, but the necessities of this is the sonar and the air cannon. You can't even interact with the ship until you use the sonar. The air cannon um, allows you to uncover the ship, so. Okay, so then the question is how much, so 250 for? Gilda stars, not even gold, Gilda. Right, 250 Gilda stars for the seahorse with fancy eyeballs. Yeah, the submarine, go ahead, seahorse, same thing, yeah. Sure, um, but then what about the other stuff? How much does that other stuff cost? So it's like uh, it, var it varies per server. Okay. Um, so, you know, obviously each one is, a, is gonna be a different price. Um, I lucked out and got them for about 200 each on the auction house. Yeah, but you can also make these, and I really recommend that's the way to go. They have some proficiency armor out there now on the vocation shop that can give you up to 20,000 proficiency in almost any skill, so. Okay, well, the next big thing you need to know is you need to have someone recovery pouches. They basically are e essential to take the ship off the bottom of the ocean. Um, without them, you cannot raise it. Typically, you need 10 recovery pouches per ship, so you're going to want to make a few. Luckily, the mats for them aren't too bad. You just go to any general merchant, and you pick up a recovery pouch kit. Now, this, this in itself is not enough. You need to have some leather with it, and I'll make five of them real quick just to show you guys what it's like. So you go over here to a leather workstation. And under Exploration, they have Salvage. You click on Recovery Pouch, and you'll see it takes one piece of regular leather and a recovery pouch kit. Now, it's important to note, some of the packs that are on the ship are shiny. The shiny ones require 100,000 proficiency. In order to gain that 100,000, you either do ship hunting for months upon months, or you simply make 4,000 of these uh, recovery pouches. So, uh, we've got some recovery pouches. Uh, we know let's hit the water. I'm on a boat, motherfucker. We running this, let's go. I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. Everybody look at me, cause I'm sailing on a boat. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? Yes. Okay, cool. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on Frozen Gaming. Uh-uh, you need to back the fuck up right meow. You understand I will cut you, right? Alright, we're over in the right area, and what I've done is we're jumping on my, my merchant ship for two reasons. A, you need it to carry the packages, and B, you use it just for the telescope or compass. Now, if you look on the map, we're pretty much close to Sunspec Seas and Sunspec Isle and, and all that good stuff and the you know free ditch. Um, the boats, sorry, the, the sunken ships themselves are usually on this path that you see me making. Um, so if you follow this path, you're going to find some sunken ships. There are some other ones in other locations. So this isn't the only spot, but this is the path I follow and I usually find a bunch. So we summoned our ship right here. And as you can see, we've already found one. This is broken lifeboat. That is the key indicator. So go ahead and navigate towards that blue dot I just put on the map navigating and when you get there try to break the ship like try to run it over okay 
Like, aim directly for it. And, you know, obviously this is a, um, this is a, a high PvP area, so we gotta be careful. When we get there and we actually break the life up, hard left, hard left. I see it, I see it. Run that fucker right over, like right through the center. I'm shooting for. Hard left, hard left. And what, the reason we're running this over, straight, a little bit right, a little bit right, a little bit right. Uh, yeah, you got it. You I got did it. it! You did it! Congratulations! <laughs> Yay! Now, oh, fuck you, get off my ship. Oh. <laughs> All right, so now that we're here, um, I'm going to go ahead and put on my scuba gear and go down. You keep an eye out up top. Okay. So basically what we're gonna do is we swim to the bottom and from, there's a general rule here. From that uh, broken lifeboat, the bubbles that we need are within 200 meters. Oh wow, we lucked out. There's double ships down here. So, um, double rainbow. So usually what I do is I click on the, the broken lifeboat and you see there's a little meter indicator here. The bubbles will be within 200 meters of that, but I, I, you know, part of me has to raise this little, this little sunken treasure chest right here. So, okay. So when that goes to the top, loot it. Okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look around here for a set of bubbles on the bottom of the ocean, and like I said, it's within 200 meters of that broken lifeboat. And the reason we broke the lifeboat is the broken lifeboat is an indicator to us and to other people on where this sunken treasure is. And honestly, we don't want to share. We're bad sharers. So we want all those packages to ourselves, and we don't want the pirates to eat our faces. Second one I have to, to go to again. Oh, okay. found the bubbles. You can see them. They're pretty clear from a, from a decent distance. So when you get to the bubbles, the very first thing is you have to equip the sonar. So if you take a look, I'm going to swim my happy butt right down there. And without the sonar, I can't even interact with this. It's just like, okay, there's bubbles on the bottom of the ocean. But if I get here with the sonar, you click scan ships, and boom, reveals. Big guys are running. It knocks you off, the, it doesn't do any damage to you. But if you look, once it's revealed, I can walk up to it. I can walk up to it and start, you know, mining on it to try and get it out of here, but that wastes labor. So if I go over to the ship, to my, my submarine, I equip the air cannon. I put the nose of the submarine right on the on the end. I hit fire compressed air. And you see it uncovers it for me without wasting any la additional labor. You see it uncovers it just a little bit more. You know, partially recovered cargo. So we're going to hit it again. Usually takes three to four times. So there's the third time. You can see a little bit more of the ship. That was the third time. And you can see, boom, ship's available. From this point, what we have to do is you swim along until you get this little hammer icon, okay? And then you're going to click the hammer icon here. And we're attaching the salvage packs to it. So it's usually 10. So here we're going to go. Here's the second one. Because as soon as I raise this, it's going to send out a zone-wide message that someone's raised, raised a ship. Doesn't tell them where, thankfully. But once you attach them all, right here it says spend 100 labor to cut the ropes. So I'm cutting the rope now, and I'm bringing the ship up. This is actually going to bring it up right away. And it's pretty interesting. I, I love seeing it. Now, see, there's the message right there. Wood creaks and water froth, you know, etc. And the ship's coming up. At this point, we can actually start uncovering the um, the uh, the actual cargo that's on it before it even gets to the to the surface. And also, from my perspective, sitting at the surface watching for other ships and such, as soon as I ducked under the water, I could see all the the recovery packs, the balloons, oh, yeah, and the water, and everything. White. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's very recognizable. As soon as you just break the surface, you don't have to be way underwater to find it. You can find it right from the surface. 
Now, if you notice, there's going to be someone here that's a shiny sunken cargo. Okay? That requires 100k proficiency to open. I do not have 100k proficiency yet. Um, I'm getting close, but, uh, you know, there's the 35k plus the 20k from the Dawn's Drop. So, halfway there, I guess. So, I'm going to un uncover these. And as you can see, we're piercing the surface now. And from my perspective, sitting on the surface, watching the boat rise, I'm not seeing, even though it's right underneath me, I'm really not seeing anything under the water. So if you are just looking around for it or anything like that, it's not going to happen um, unless you've broken um, the surface of the water and looked underneath. So because I don't have the proficiency, um, you know, I can't open the shiny one. But luckily for us, because I don't have the proficiency also... Um, we only got one shiny, which those are the difference in the shinies and, and go ahead and start loading up the ship. The difference in the shinies is that you're guaranteed over a basic level um, package. Um, it's still RNG on which ones you get, but you know you can get it you can get the high level ones off the lower boxes, but it's just rare. So, another thing we got to do is move the ship a little bit closer. A little bit. Now, also, we're close to the pirate area, so what I'm going to have you do is stay on the, the radar. Alright, loading the last pack. Um, here we go. As you can see, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 packs. From there, not counting the one shiny... Uh, package right there that I couldn't open contains two more, so 15 packs per ship. Um, they come in various uh, qualities. You can get a basic cargo pack, a rare cargo pack, a luxury, and an ancient literature. The ancient literature is rare, but um, it's it's very uh, worthwhile. So, the, so go ahead. the question is. Is every raised sunken ship going to have 15 packets on yes, it? Yes, they all ah. have 15. Whether you can open all 15 or not depends on your proficiency. So that is really your only variable. Of if I'm starting to go and raise ships, uh, I might not have any, any real ability to open everything, but I should be able to open some. And at best, it would be 15, um, but I should expect to get some shinies well, on that. Well, you're going to get 15, and you're, in, you're not guaranteed to get a shiny. You can get, like five shinies or all shinies it's, it's it's you know rng on that one okay um on which ones you get but uh you know i've had packages where or ships where you get no shinies on them and i've had ones that you get all shinies on them so interesting you know it's, it's it's hit or miss on which way you go um so uh where are we going well that that's a great question where do we turn these fuckers in well most people are like hey gold trader no 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 it there's only one type of trader that will take um these packs and it's actually called the ocean trader and there's three locations well four if you count the opposite faction but there's three locations that we can take it safely quote unquote um one is to take it over to diamond shores which is in peace right now it's got two hours left that's fantastic um which we might end up doing that actually one of them is in Solus uh, Headlands, which is right at the dock here. At right, you know, at, they have the Ocean Trader. Go ahead and turn. I think we're going to take it over to Diamond Shores. It's, it's a little bit closer. Okay, so as you see, we're nearing Aurora. Um, one of the general practices and is to always have two people with you when you're doing these... Uh, when you're doing the the recovery, it is one is to always watch the telescope slash compass. Um, hold on, we got a broken lifeboat. As you can see, there's a little icon that just popped up. Um, the icon is the same for all the different boats, and the practice is the person that's on the compass is the person that has group leads, so they can mark to show where the boats are to avoid them and whatnot. Um, the general practice is that you mark each type of um, thing that you're dealing with, each, each type of ship that you're dealing with, so that the driver has the information he needs to avoid it. 
then if the ship is changing position coming towards you or whatnot to update it as you see it change position so that you know the intercept course and they can make a better decision on evading um, all the icons are the same so what you do is you hover over the uh, over the icon and it tells you who the owner is what guild they're in what type of boat it is um, and if they're friend or foe all right so we're finally reaching diamond shores um, this is where you want to go in uh, for the uh, east side you're going to see an Ezzy's light right there to protect your ship go tax and we're there so go ahead and hold the controls So here's the Ocean Trader for Aurora. And this first special deep act turn in for nine gold. And this one turns in for 14 gold, 36 silver. Uh, this one's, by the way, 29 gold, 48 silver. So, and, and this goes to someone might be looking at you turning all these packets in and go, well, why just have one? Why not both of us? And you owner mark your ship. Because even though it's owner's mark, they can still harpoon it and drag it absolutely they they can pull you out with the clippers right and it's it's painful it's, and and at this point where we're sitting at right now that is the only risk that we're taking right is that someone grabs us with a clipper and drags us out besides that there is no risk and because they, and there's they no need PC. two people to do that they one person to shoot the one person to shoot the harpoon and one person to drive the clipper uh okay so uh that's how you guys uh get a trade ship off the bottom of the ocean turn the packs in uh, everything you need to know and everything you need to have. If you like this video and you found it useful, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe.